If you are excited about if statements coming to CSS, then hold on to your hats because an even more powerful feature just landed in Chrome Stable, and that is CSS custom functions using at function. Let me show you a couple of examples for how this works. So the first example I want to show you is this opacity function. This is a feature that is so useful. Um, originally, there was a tweet from Adam Wathen who was asking if you could use color mix to adjust the opacity of a color. So I wrote this blog post all about how you can do that and how you can mix with transparent to essentially create these alpha or opacity variants of a theme color. Um, and you can see how this can be really useful for design systems. So color mix is an okay way to do this, but an even better way to do this is the relative color syntax, which has since landed across all browsers thanks to Interop 2024. So we can take this a step further and make it even better using CSS custom functions. So that's exactly what I did here. I'm making this opacity function and it accepts two values, a color and the opacity value or the alpha value, however you want to call it. Then I'm setting up this results. So this is what the output or the return statement essentially is going to be for this custom function. And here I'm using the CSS relative color syntax, um, where I'm using RGB just because I'm using a CSS keyword in this example, but you can use OKLCH or whatever color space you want. So here I have set up the um, color syntax where I have RGB from, and then the color variable that I'm pulling from here as my first argument, I'm splitting out the channels, and then the slash syntax to apply the alpha transparency or the opacity to it. So here we have the slash and then the value for the opacity, which is the second argument. Now, the way that we use it is very straightforward. So first I wanna call the function. So I'm calling it by name here, which is dash dash opacity. And then I'm applying the two arguments, which is hot pink, which is the color, and then 70%, which is the opacity value. And I could make this 20% to make it a lot more light, or I can make this maybe 90%, or maybe you have um, alpha variables that you wanna use here. So you can also use custom properties inside of these functions like I do here for the text, where I'm setting the color to uh, this variable, which is blue, so that might be my root blue theme color. Um, and then I'm setting it to 40% alpha opacity. So you can set up your entire design system this way, kind of like I do here, where you can call the function and make it a lot more clear what's happening instead of using color mix or even relative color syntax directly. So I think that that's really useful. Another great use of this is this conditional radius function. And this is something that I saw at CSS Day. So I saw this uh, when Adam Argyle was on stage, he gave a great talk and he showed this functionality where you have this rounded border radius. And then when it gets closer to the edge, you want it to go edge to edge. So I feel like this is a really useful little utility here because you don't want on a mobile or a smaller screen to see these rounded edges, especially when it's right up against the edge there. So he had quoted this Ahmad Shadid article, which goes through how to do this. And Ahmad was inspired by the Facebook team, which he saw do this. And um, Naman Gol from the Facebook team adapted this Flexbox Holy Albatross solution from Hayden Pickering. Um, and then this article kind of goes through using Min and Max, but then Temani Afif, um, recommended the clamp function and Leon Yosef recommended it too. So this is like really a mind meld of a lot of different thoughts going into this, but ultimately it leads to this solution where you use clamp to set a, a zero pixel value and then your actual border radius. And then you do some math so that you are moving from hundred VW minus that edge value, uh, minus 100%, um, to essentially say, okay, I'm at the edge or there's space between my card, my box, my div, and the edge of the um, viewport. So it's a really clever way to not have to write media queries, basically. Um, so I made this a function, and this is called conditional radius. It accepts two values. One is the radius that we wanna set, and the other is the edge distance. And I'm also giving it a default value of four pixels here. So if I don't set a second argument, then it's just gonna use four pixels. So then I'm putting that entire uh, clamp function in here where it's doing these calculations here. Um, it's first calling the edge distance variable, um, subtracting that from the 100 viewport edge um, to give us some space there. And then multiplying it by one to the fifth power, which is from open props. But in the article, Ahmad just uses 9999 as a big value here. Doesn't matter. 
Um, so then going back to it, let me find my tab. Uh, then I'm setting the var radius, so the actual radius that we want to set. So here I'm using it and I am basically just showing you how you can use it with this default value of four pixels. Um, here it's more like two pixels on each side um, as I'm getting closer to the edge right there. But I can also set this to zero pixels if I want so that it just applies that um, style right at the edge. So like right here when I hit that edge and there's no um, added edge distance, I can also set this to like 50 pixels so that it applies it a lot sooner. And that is the beauty of CSS custom functions. It's so much more legible to say, all right, my border radius is the conditional radius of one rem with a distance of 50 pixels. That's my border radius. Or my border radius is just one rem and then I don't even have to worry about uh, that second argument because maybe I want that for all my properties to do this sort of style. So this is a really great addition to CSS. I'm excited to see it land. It's a part of the CSS mixins and functions spec. Um, and there's even more that I'm excited about with mixins and apply uh, that hasn't landed yet, but I will definitely keep you updated when it does. Give this a try. It is in Chrome 139, which is probably the latest Chrome that you have if you updated it lately. And let me know what you think.